Let's dive a little deeper into the Pennsylvania primary with John Delano from our Pittsburgh affiliate KDKA. He joins me now for more on the contest tonight in the Keystone State. John, let me pick up with you, ask you a question I asked Bob. Can you give us a sense of what parts of Pennsylvania you might be watching tonight to give an indication of who's going to win the GOP primary and the Democratic Senate primary? Well, it's very interesting, uh, Ed. First of all, great to be with you. When you start to look to where Republicans live, ironically, there are more Republicans in Allegheny County, greater Pittsburgh, than any other part of the state. I think some 265,000 Republicans are in this county where I am right now. Uh, so it's obviously very important, this part of Western Pennsylvania. But in terms of an aggregate number of Republicans, there are the counties that surround Philadelphia. And we're talking really Montgomery County, Bucks County, Delaware County, Chester County. You add all those counties together and you're going to have uh, far more votes than even here in, in uh, western Pennsylvania. I will point out that Lancaster County in south central Pennsylvania is another real stronghold for Republican voters. So if you're looking for concentration of votes, the counties that we're going to first look at, I've just named the ones that I'm going to be looking at later tonight. So much of the attention has been on the Republican side of the Senate contest. But on the Democratic side, frontrunner John Fetterman, who's currently the state's lieutenant governor, uh, threw a wrench into things over the weekend, acknowledging he suffered a stroke on Friday. He's been hospitalized. He was having a procedure today to work on his AFib. Uh, his campaign released a photo of him earlier today casting an emergency absentee ballot. First off, because I know he's from your part of the state, you have any indication of the severity of this stroke he suffered and why he's laid up? And any sense well, of how it might have changed the minds of Democratic primary voters here in the closing days? Well, I've texted with him, and he says he's fine. But, of course, he's not going to say one way or the other, and he's certainly not giving medical advice. And I'm hardly a medical doctor. I think that uh, the situation, obviously, is so serious, or at least serious enough, that he's still in the hospital. He went in on Friday, and today's Tuesday. He's still there. But you see video of him, and he's perfectly uh, lucid and, and conversant. And the fact that he can text is uh, another, uh, obviously another positive sign. Um, but he did have to go in to have a pacemaker put in today. That was the surgery a couple hours ago, a pacemaker to control the AFib of his heart. And, uh, you know, all those, these surgeries have become very routine. Uh, and he has age going for him. He's 52 years old. He's also lost a lot of weight over the years. He was much heavier. I think he weighed as much as 400 pounds at one point. He's much, much thinner since those days. So, you know, he's got a lot going for him. And I've seen no indication that he can't run for the U.S. Senate if he, if he wins the Democratic nomination today. I do not think this will impact the election one way or the other. I know there's some thought that people might be worried that he could be a candidate. And there are others who think, well, maybe he'll get a little sympathy vote. But I think on balance, I don't think this is going to make much of a difference. The other big Pennsylvania contest is the gubernatorial primary. Doug Mastriano, a state senator who pushes the great lie about the 2020 elections, looks like it's his to lose. Uh, from anyone on the outside looking in at Pennsylvania, what should they know about him? Well, here's the problem, Ed. It's very difficult for local reporters throughout the Commonwealth to get much of information directly from him. We've not had the sit down interviews or the interviews we've had with all the other candidates. And it's been very difficult indeed. He is a 30 year military officer, retired colonel. Uh, he taught at the War College. Uh, he is somebody who's really new to politics. He was just elected a state senator. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago. So it's not as if he's been in government a long time, but there's no question that he's a strong, strong conservative. And he's somebody who has really been the Trump movement in Pennsylvania. But I think you could even argue before Trump. Uh, the fact is that he uh, led a busload of folks to the January 6th event in Washington, a rally or an insurrection, depending on your point of view. He certainly says he was not part of the violence. Uh, he then led an investigation claiming that the Pennsylvania result in 2020, in which uh, President Biden won the state by 80,000 votes, Mastriano says it was, uh, you know, stolen uh, from uh, from uh, uh, Donald Trump. So, you know, it's it's hard to know <laughs> too much more about him. I mean, he's married, family man. I mean, he's very active in his church. I, I mean, those things you get from his bios and what people say about him. 
But in terms of where he stands specifically on issues from a direct one-on-one -on -one reporter inquiry, we haven't had that yet. Maybe we'll see between now and November. We can hope so. And, uh, and if it happens, undoubtedly, you'll help open that book. John Delano with KDKA. Folks can track coverage from Pennsylvania on CBSPittsburgh.com tonight. We thank you for joining us. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Ed. Good to be with you.